One, two, three. Welcome to the show. Get familiar. Get familiar. Get familiar. Welcome to Win Big with Clint Sparks. It's time to get familiar. Yeah, live show, platinum plaques, guitars. I don't know how to play a guitar, but... It felt like you were about to go in. I, I it, assumed you could. If, it, if I could have sang a limerick for you, I would have, Rob Durdick. I would have appreciated it. I felt the energy either way. Speaking of energy, Rob Durdick is a guy that's all... There's people in the world, right? That I, I have a list, a short list of people that I think like just their presence makes the world a better place. And that list is people like The Rock, Kevin Hart, Ellen DeGeneres, Jimmy Fallon, and Rob Durdick. Like, those are just people that, those are people that just make life better. It makes, you might be having a bad day, you run into them, or you put on TV and they're on, and they just make you feel better and they make you feel happier. So thank you, Rob Durdick, for making the world we live in a better place. Thank you. Thank you for putting me on the pedestal of such great, happy people out there. Well, you are, Rob, man, and I know you're a humble dude, too, and, and you know, there was a time that I, you know, we sat at your office for several hours uh, when I just came to meet with you about something and ended up sitting there for hours and, and gave out a lot of game and it was really fascinating to understand and see how you operate and how you run your businesses and how you came from where you started to where you are now. And you know, the show's called Win Big with Clinton Sparks and you're somebody that's continued to win big over the years and there's a lot of game that, that you gave that day. That I, I left that day thinking like, Yo, I already love this dude, but when I left, I really, really love him, and I respect and admire him more than I even... And I didn't even think I could anymore. I already thought you were the shit. You know what I mean? But when I left there, I was like, I would, I would kiss him in the most platonic way possible if he would be cool with that. But, uh, <laughs> but anyways, I want, you to, I want you to tell all the people that are paying attention now, like, I want to start off, like, how did you begin your journey of winning big? Right, like what was in your mind when you made a plan from the beginning? Because uh, you did, did I read that you didn't graduate high school? No, I didn't. You didn't, yeah. Neither did I. Go figure. Yeah. Winners not graduating yeah. high school. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I mean, that's a whole nother conversation about school doesn't teach you how to win, right? Yeah. But anyway, so you didn't graduate high school. So at that point, I don't know if you were like me, but at that point, you might have been like, "What am I going to do with my life?" Yeah. Well, I me mean, at that point, like, look, I, I. I found it was different for me because I found success early and then, you know, I quit. I had had an opportunity to turn pro at 16 as a professional skateboarder, um, except for in that day and age, skateboarders didn't make any money. So the fight was, hey, great, you're a pro skateboarder. You've been recognized. But what does that even mean? You know, because the first year that I turned pro in Christmas, I sold one board and got a check for two dollars. You know what I mean? So. Uh, well, I was guaranteed, we will guarantee you a thousand dollars a month if you move from Ohio to San Diego when I was uh, 17 years old. And I felt like I won the lottery. It was like, are you, what the fuck, a thousand, what? I popped into my 86 Honda Civic and I barreled that thing across the country to start my new rich life now that I made a thousand dollars a month guaranteed, you know. I remember when I got my first thousand dollars as a DJ. I remember a buddy of mine was like, "Man, you over here charging five hundred? You should charge a thousand. Like, whoa, that's way too much. No one's gonna pay me a thousand dollars to DJ just to play records." And I remember the first time I got a thousand dollars cash, I was like, "Yo, if I can do this once a week, I'm rich." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so rich. So, so you went. So you moved to San Diego. You're getting a thousand dollars a month. Um, then you're succeeding uh, in, in the skate world. Was there ever a point where you felt like it ran its course and you didn't know where you were going to go from there? Because you were pretty successful in that area. So then yeah. you, you do that. Yeah, I mean, look, I also, I also was constantly overlapping and doing... One thing that I never stopped was letting like, my dreams evolve around my opportunities, right? right? So like, as I got there, the first thing I did is I connected with one of the manufacturers and I started my first company right, at 18 years old and went through the process of building a company for the first time. And, and even I, I began to build relationships with Drawers Clothing that eventually became my DC partnership, right? Like uh, all of this stuff, like kind of kept overlapping and evolving, uh, but I was still like not fully, uh, I didn't like what I was becoming, 
right? I didn't have fun skateboarding as much. And I, uh, I what, had, what, what were you becoming that you didn't like? I, meaning that I was like just partying a lot and like lost my passion for like skateboarding was trying all these different businesses and sort of for the first time in my life, I had sort of lost belief in myself where I was like anchored. My belief in myself was what like turned me pro at 16 and had me leave school and go to California and start companies at 18 and push all of it. And there was just sort of this period um, because I had allowed myself to get pulled in so many different directions and was taking on things that I didn't understand and, and not winning at them, that then I began to doubt like what I was even ultimately capable of mm -hmm. uh, in that era. You know, that's so important because that applies to now to the youth that especially that are trying to make it in the music business, right? And they keep trying different things. And I, I got a chapter in the book called Stop Throwing Snowballs at Brick Walls, right? Because you're not going to knock it down. You got to try something different. You got to learn how to pivot. And if you keep putting records out this way or just keep posting on your social media and all of a sudden you're not getting a, a, a big increase in numbers, then you're not doing what needs to be done right. I like the fact that you said, you know, you started feeling, you started doubting yourself. And I think a lot of kids now doubt themselves or they think it's something that's unrealistic for them to actually win big in the ways that you're, you have won, right? But you're a kid just like them that was, was doing what you love to do and maybe you got caught up in a little bit of the bullshit that you just like, you kind of got lost a little bit of who you were and then you just kind of, now you're doubting yourself. How did you then pull yourself back up and be like, I'm a winner, I'm gonna start winning? Well, the first thing I did was got hypnotized for success, right? Uh, found Wait, it, legitimately hypnotized? No, legitimately found the most incredible hypnotist uh, <laughs> who wrote a book called Hyper Success, who will hypnotize your subconscious, who from that point on my life exploded and was never, never the same ever again. And most recently, he I had my five year wedding anniversary and he uh, over uh, saw the sermon, which was really remarkable all these years later. Um, but really, it was uh, focus, right? Like I just really like cleared out everything that wasn't le like part of driving me towards my bigger goals, right? And that focus allowed me to create more clarity to create the goals. Then the energy and momentum and the progression towards achieving them mm -hmm. began to like build the engine that refueled the self-belief that then I never looked back from that. It was like, always decide what you want, build the plan to get there, and your progression towards it's ultimately gonna fuel the belief that you're going to get there. And if you're not making progress, you have to pivot, you know? Man, you're, you're literally saying everything that I wrote in this book, how to win big in the music business. By the way, when I, when I dropped this book, Rob called me and he said, I gotta talk to you for a minute. I'm thinking something was wrong. I, my girl was in the room. I was even like, hold on, give me a minute. I thought you were gonna, I thought something was a problem, right? Yeah. So you're like, I got to talk. I just got through reading your book. And I'm like, all right, where's he going with this? And, and, he's, and this, is what Rob, this is what Rob said to me, Jules. He goes, why did you limit this book to just the music business? This book is about winning big in life. Yeah. Now, now, what made you say that? Like, what about the book made you think it was bigger than just the music business? Because it's all principles that could be applied to any level, uh, anything that you're ultimately trying to achieve, right? Now, it dumps down into a, a couple more specific layers, right, as it relates to uh, music specifically. But the whole book is, is could, anyone could apply to any aspect of their life. And they're the fun, it's the principles of success, right, right. That, that you have to not only do if you want to achieve it, but it's a lifelong practice, to get better and better at it as you grow, right? Because these, these things don't, you don't become, you don't read a book and just go out and apply it overnight. You read a book and begin to understand it and applying it, you begin to learn, actually learn it. Then you begin to get better at it. Then that ultimately affects your way of life. And I think that's a lot of the principles that you've created for yourself and ultimately put in this book, you know? And the other thing that you end up doing as, a, as well as applying it and learn it over time is you win big. You, <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> I think, you know, the biggest mistake that I made, I say it in the book, one of the biggest mistakes I made starting out early was thinking people more successful than me uh, must be more talented than me. Was there ever a point where like 
you felt that way coming up? I've only recently understood what that truly means because I never, I, I, I wasn't quite caught by that specific limiting belief. I would be more like, I can do anything and then go and do it and it wouldn't work. And then I would be like, what? And, and I would be frustrated, right? Like, and, and I think that the, the, the truth is that all people are made up very similar. Your range of intelligence is not that far from anyone's. And it's ultimately how you dedicate yourself to learning, growing, evolving towards what it is you hope to achieve or the life that you want to have ultimately is the great differentiator in those that go on to, to find great success and, and those that don't, right? And, and I think that, that I only kind of have a better understanding of everybody's the same uh, at this point in my life, especially the, the depth that I've learned as it relates to the financial side of business mm -hmm. and all the things that I really have learned that are, I just looked at like, oh, I would never learn that or, or that's what the finance guy does. That's what the operator does, right? Rather than learning all of that and now yeah, realizing that. like, no, that all of that in your toolbox mm -hmm. is what those other really successful people had. They learned all that stuff before they did their business, right? right? That, that's sort of one of the bigger breakthroughs that I had in recent years. You know, I, I noticed the more people I talk to, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, the, the real winners, the ones that continually win. And when I mean winning, I don't mean just themselves. I mean, helping others win is winning too, right? And you're somebody that does that. You know, I, I always say helping others be great is being great. When other people were thinking like they, they couldn't imagine making it in the music business, I naively couldn't imagine not making it. Like yeah. I didn't even understand like this was my plan. I'm not going to not do this. You know what I mean? And I've never had a goal in my entire life that I haven't accomplished. And I feel like you're pretty similar to that. You're pretty like amazing when it comes to this is what I'm going to do. And you, and you think about it strategically too. You don't just jump into stuff because you personally like it or you, know, you think about does it make sense of what, is it on brand what I'm doing? Does it make sense with everything else I'm working on? Is it gonna have the most ROI out of these five opportunities that I have right here? How much bandwidth do I have to give? That takes me away from my family. So like, I know there's a lot of strategic thinking into how you move forward on doing, especially now, maybe when you were younger, you might have been a little more like instinctive, like I'm gonna do this because it's awesome, right? But, but now, and I think that if younger people apply these same principles and values that people like yourself have learned to understand and master, like everybody else can succeed so much faster than those of us that came before them and made the mistakes or didn't understand this mentality or psychology of, of, of moving forward strategically the way that you do. I, will, I used to be someone that just would fall in love with ideas and do it, right? I, I saw like what I, I looked at it, what I would consider, it, there's probably seven core dimensions to look at anything you want to achieve. You have to look at it both holistically and dimensionally, right? And for the most part, what you're best at, what you gravitate towards, you tend to look at it through those few dimensions instead of the entire dimensions that it takes to understand how it can be successful. And, and to me, both applying that to life and business and to ideas really changed everything for me in the sense of how things happened and ultimately how successful they became in a shorter period, right? But make no mistake, even today, I'm in this, this bizarre high net worth peer group, right? And it's just rich guys talking about rich things, right? And it <laughs> ranges from 65 year old guys that have sold companies for a hundred million to like, you know, young venture capital guys. It's a super interesting group. And part of the, the group's uh, methodology is you have to, each, each month, one of you has to share all of your assets, how you manage all of your money in your story for they call it portfolio defense for the other people to be like pick apart but you do so it's for the realest of the real right, right. like you here's everything i do and like you it's called you know you got to defend it but even to this day i have a vision for the consistency that i can create in the venture space mm -hmm. right where venture they play the game of hey you're going to you're trying to bat like 
uh, one out of 10, all you need is one to make up for the 10 that you did. And, and I'm of the philosophy of, no, I want to create a system and get and master never missing. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want to miss. Every time I say, let's do this together with somebody, like I want to know that it's going to work, right? right? Now, of course, it takes all of this art, science, and magic for that to actually happen. But I believe I can become 90% successful uh, every time. Now, in, right now and this year, they all push back on that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just unrealistic. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. So even at this age, at this scale, in that group, I'm still finding the fuel uh, at this highly optimized version of like, okay, just wait. You know what I mean? Like 10 years from now, you're going to be like, damn, that's crazy. Like you really never missed, right? Yeah. Like that's that goes back to that. It's that same relentless work ethic and unwavering self-belief mm -hmm. uh, backed by fortitude, grit, determination and ambition right. right that makes you like see um it happening in the future mm -hmm. uh, not not needing to question whether or not it actually is they right. just don't understand it only it's that at a refined much more strategic vision because i used to say the same thing when i launched and put two million dollars into my feature film and made it rated r and everybody was like don't make it rated r and it yeah. I didn't sell one ticket, right? <laughs> when I, you know, launched my league and I'm like, we're going to get, it's going to be, the Giants going to be as big as NBA ratings and it's going to be the vote. And nobody watched it, right? right it's right. like, there's that same sort of wait and see, let me show you, mm -hmm. which was got me uh, so far in life is now refined in a way that I am able to use it, but still it's a part of my existence even now. Right, and it's the refining concept that's really uh, an important part of what you just said because, you know, there's some people out here that they think they have a great idea and they just keep pushing, 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 and it's not working. Then they may listen to somebody like you and say, well, Rob just kept going and it ended up working. And it's that refining and, and self-awareness and understanding all the strategy behind it and the decision-making because you might think you're the illest artist in the world and all you make is fire records. Right, yeah. so you're out here just putting out records, putting out records, and people, you're not getting the the, the 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 momentum you're looking for. Inevitably, the records are not fire, bro. Right, so it has to come down to like you have to really be able to pick yourself apart, like you're a business. Even when you're an artist, you're still a business, right? And you, it's the business of you. So you have to figure what's good about my business and what's bad. And to, in order to be able to do that, you have to have insane self awareness, which it seems like you have because you realize like. This is not good for me. Mark Wahlberg said the, the biggest lesson he learned was the power of saying no. He had to pass on a lot of movies that he wanted to do, but he told me his agent Ari taught him how to say no to things that he would have taken checks for because, look, we're just Boston guys. We'll take a check. You got a check for me? I'll do every movie. You got 20 million? I'm coming, right? But like Mark was like, the power of saying no is what enabled me to become the movie star that I became. And I think that you've developed the power of saying no quite often. Oh, I mean, look, I'm to an art form, to a mastery, you know, and it's it, in there's a lot of, of patience in it. Right. I think for me, because I'm also, you know, I'm transitioning a personal brand. Right. Like I'm. I'm trying to evolve out of sort of skateboarder MTV into a fully business brand. But in, which has forced me to walk away from traditional endorsement deals and stop doing press and stop doing like really. And what am I, what have I do? What I do in 2018, I sold five companies, right? Since I launched in 2016, we sold six companies and sold five in a year in our third year. Right. So, and still didn't do any press on it, but I've said no to like, hosting any other television show, doing any other thing, like doing movies, doing any other thing, because I don't actually have any interest in being a television celebrity or continuing in doing some sort of television or really even being someone that's in the front facing a brand. You know what I mean? I stopped doing all brand endorsements and all stuff related to that mm -hmm. and said no to all of that because this is sort of a, a, a means to a, the next chapter of my life. So you're really in tune with, with 
with culture, you know, doing ridiculousness, doing all your brands. Like Rob gets offered a lot of opportunities to do other shows, but he has a plan that he's committed to and focused on it. And other opportunities may come, but that wasn't part of the plan. So even though Rob understands the art of pivoting, he still also knows how to stay focused on his plan to get to the goal that he's trying to get to. Just because somebody else won a certain way doesn't mean you have to follow them and do it their way. If you have your plan and you've built your, uh, your, your, your model to get to that plan, then you need to focus on that. So one thing, Rob, because you're so in tune with, with youth culture, uh, how much music do you listen to? Is music a big part of your life? Uh, not like it used to be. You know what I mean? I, I think it's... it's you know, I, I think it's a bit more to do with my age, you know what I mean? Yeah. Of like, but I'm still like a, a top 40 guy. Yeah. You, know you still know, you still like know what's dope. Rap. You yeah. still know what's dope. What, what do you suggest to a young kid, you know, whether he wants to be a music executive or an entrepreneur or, you know, a manager for another artist? What do you suggest for a young guy? What would be some of the traits uh, that you see have worked for you uh, that he should start a 22, 23, 24 year old kid that he's like, I want to be a Rob Durdick one day? I want to own my own companies, but I also know it's going to take me time to get there. What are some of the steps or some of the principles and values you would kind of advise for them to, to kind of apply to their way, their selves to get to that point? Yeah. And I mean, look, I think it's different based off of who you are, what gives you energy, what type of life that you want, right? Because I think at the end of the day, you have to, um, you have to design a life, right? And what you choose to do as work uh, is going to be a major piece of that, but you got to make sure that you have a path inside that decision of both mastery and the capital and earning potential to live the lifestyle that you uh, see for yourself, right? Now, now it's like, if you want to be a, a manager, go get close to a manager, right? Like, go get close to somebody that you really... Uh, respect that's going to give you access to give you sort of the pathway of what uh, it hopes to achieve. If you don't have someone that's in that realm, then you have to learn every single thing that there is about it, right? And, and I don't care what you do in, in life. If you want to be in any type of business or be successful, you've got to learn financial literacy. You just right. got to understand money. Like you, you, you're just not, you're always going to get in trouble if you want to get into business in any way, shape or form, and you have too much uh, blind spot on as it relates to money. And it's hard for creative people. Mm -hmm. It's hard for athletes. It's hard for, for people that put all that effort into uh, being creative or, or passionate about artistry uh, athleticism, it's, it's hard to pivot back into using that part of your brain, but you have to, you know, if you want to be in business, you have to learn business. Learning costs you nothing. Learning everything about what you want to be a part of, and then ultimately figuring out what part of that you want to master. Because being a manager, is, for example, in music, a lot of different, a lot of different layers to like what you could do and what you could enjoy like are you someone that ha is the person that's going to be deeply connected that's going to be the conduit that creates opportunity for artists and and then provides value for both the artist and providing value for who ultimately could support or pay the artist right, right. at the end of the day in that in that world it's really a, a value exchange and when right. in figuring out how to master that um, is where all of your earning potential is going to live. You know? Right. Being a value add is very important. We talk about that in the book too, which you know. I'll let you go, Rob, because I know you got family time to get to. But one thing I want to say, because a lot of times I think when people, people are afraid to fail, right? And they're afraid to make mistakes because they feel like if they made a mistake that they're a failure or they get deflated or they lose momentum. Uh, maybe by hearing something that maybe you failed at, and we're worried about resuscitating from that failure. We'll help somebody, give them hope, being able to keep moving forward. Is there something that you ever were really excited about when all in and just lost? Look, I've failed more times than I could ever imagine. Painful ones, you know what I mean? Big shot, acquiring companies and watching the companies disintegrate, right? Like, big shot stuff. Failure is not like buying there. It's not familiar. right or left. It's like... You have a million chances to learn during failure as it's happening in, in twisting and turning and twisting and making decisions. And if you can just learn to be aware of failure as a process 
in, in a lot of times, especially things that really matter to you. When you do a business or an idea, at some point, you're going to lose belief in its ability to come true or continue. Mm -hmm. That's when you're going to quit, right? right? It's just a fact of life. Everybody goes through it. Everything you're going to choose to do does not work. Some stakes are higher than others. But failure, if you can just know it's part of the process and you can learn as you're going and be calculating all of these lessons into by the time you make your next move here's all the things that i'm never going to do right, right, right. And i think that's what it is but i'm you know even to this day even in my system that i don't ever want to fail it's like i'm you know launched 16 companies in 2016 and and each of them have gone on this complete different journey uh, some wildly successful, some flatline, but it completely changed. Mm -hmm. And by just doing that, that first two years of how I will ever do a company for the rest of my life. And then I launched that where I'm like, okay, here's everything that I learned from that. And right. for me, whether it's, you know, my life or uh, my businesses or anything, I now look at everything as it decide what you want to do, build a plan backwards fight like a, a dog to get there. And when you, when it's clear, you're not going to get there, move on quickly. Right. right. Because right. where failure gets painful is when you just drag it out till the very end. And then you finally have to let go when you knew you could have let go, you know, four years earlier, you know, right. especially the music game, man, if you ain't, man, if you can't, if it ain't, if it ain't cracking at a certain point, you got to you got to make a decision unless it's your passion and you love it and and that's all you care about but don't have dreams of being like a multi platinum artist when no you've been putting out the same songs for 7 years and and nobody's uh, catching it you know right if you make a plan and you don't add failure to that plan then you didn't make a solid plan because if you don't plan to fail then you don't know how to deal with it when it happens yeah, and it's it's and it's a really a matter of embracing it because guess what you don't fail big you fail small along the way mm -hmm. you fail non-stop mm -hmm. and you're trying to you're just hoping that none of these failures are so big that it brings the whole ship down because those are rare it's death by a thousand cuts failure to right. most stuff you're going to do it's not one big moment and it's over it is failure by a thousand failures. Right. You know? And that's why, as you said, when you see that this, you don't see any light at the end of the tunnel, you got to learn to pivot and work on something else instead of making the big failure that you just said. And you, the, the longer you drag it on, the bigger the failure will be that you might not be able to come back from. Yeah, no, and it's just, it, I see that happening to a lot of people. And, and what, what does it come back to always? Self-awareness. Right? You just don't like you don't have enough self-awareness to like step back and look at like, what have I been doing? Why isn't it working? What should I think about to do different? You just keep your head down like, no, nah, it's about to happen. You mm -hmm. know, and, and I think that is really deep clarity, uh, mastering how to uh, create plans and make progression towards it and great self-awareness. You will literally be guaranteed success in life. You will. Literally. Guys, and you heard it from a guy who continually, literally keeps winning and has major success. That's Rob Durning, ladies and gentlemen. Get familiar. Ow! He's not just on ridiculousness. There's got to be a ton of people that are just like, oh, you're the guy from MTV. And they don't know the history of your greatness. Ah, oh, but I mean, look, that's the, the, the journey... Uh, is the legacy. The journey is in uh, my 10 years on MTV, you know what yeah. I mean? Not only are you a great businessman, not only are you a great father, not only are you a great TV host, but you are a great human being, and we are blessed to have you in our world. Rob Dodek, ladies and gentlemen.